me Girl, don't you see There ain't nobody gonna take from me Daddy said to live your life Rolling up down on your price You got to give all your heart if you want to You got to give all your heart if you want to If you want to be set free Sister said now Mike is still on. <laughs> we better check. You getting audio levels over there, Nick? Okay, we're good. Hot mic, hot mic. All right, Cam's rolling. All right, part of your plan and part of your training, part of your skill set, it may include the use of firearms. Mine personally does, a lot of people's do. Uh, with that said, though, there's a lot of information out there and um, it's kind of a buyer beware kind of thing. Uh, so I just want to do a quick segment with some real talk about my thoughts on firearms and why I choose what I choose. If, you know, having said that, if you have a particular caliber you like to use, a particular model, that, that doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to be with you if something happens. You're going to be executing your own plan. Uh, I'm just telling you what my plan is. So uh, if mine is different than yours, that's okay. Um, but I do want to show you kind of my thinking behind what I think these are for and what they're best used for uh, so that if you are someone that's new to firearms and uh, there's a lot of folks that are new to firearms these days uh, maybe if you're looking to purchase one for a particular reason for your overall preparedness then maybe you can use this as one of the you know kind of input methods one of the ways you know that you're getting some information when you're doing your own research to decide what you want to carry uh, for me personally Really, I like to go with, you know, thinking of things as the most useful for what particular leg of the, of the you know, kind of scenario that I'd be on. Uh, for most people, for personal defense, you can get away with something as simple as a pistol. And I prefer Glock, and I prefer Glock in a 9mm, okay? If you're someone that likes 45, that's that's on you. That's that's totally fine. I prefer the nine millimeter because, to me, a an altercation, we'll say, an incident is not limited to one on one. Okay, so the chances of needing to needing to engage with a follow up shot or multiple shots is pretty high. All right, and you know I don't believe in the the stopping power, knockdown power nonsense with pistols to begin with, uh, but I want a pistol that I can accurately place shots where I want them. And to me, the difference between a nine millimeter and a 45, nine millimeter, if you convert that to inches, is literally 0.354 inches. And a 45 caliber is literally 4, uh, 0.45 inches. So we're talking about 0 0.10 inches. Uh, I just, I think people are grossly overestimating the value of that 0 0.10 inches when the important thing is really shot placement. So with that said, I think that for most tactical applications, nine millimeter in a double stack magazine and the Glock platform that doesn't have any external applied safeties, no decockers, nothing that I have to manipulate. It's literally point and shoot if I need to. That's what I prefer tactically. Uh, so the Glock nine millimeter is my preferred 
pistol. And this is one that's easily concealable. Uh, it's got a pretty good magazine capacity. And again, check your local laws. You need to be legally in possession of these firearms while they're still rule of law, of course. Uh, and magazine capacity, all that applies. And I can't give you a blanket statement of all the state's laws. That's on you to research uh, for your own particular area. But my preference is a Glock 19 in nine millimeter. Um, and kind of, this is for that close in personal protection. Um, it's not flashy. It's not something I'm trying to scare people away with. That's not something that I do with firearms, right? If I pull a firearm, it's because I intend to use it. Uh, so I prefer the point and shoot capability of the Glock pistol, tactically especially. Uh, and with magazine capacity, you know, what I want you to think about is, you know, don't overdo it on the mag capacity. If you're in a bug out scenario, think about this. You're executing your plan. You've left your home. You need to move yourself or yourself and your family from point A to point B. You have an alternate location you're trying to get to. Your goal in an environment where you feel like you need a firearm for your own personal protection should also include not being found, not being seen, not making contact with people. Uh, so most of the stuff that would force you, most of the situations that would force you into actually needing to engage someone with your firearm would be pretty close in. Because if you think about it, if they're further out, then that gives you the opportunity to not make contact with them, to not engage with them, to hide, to bypass them. You know, that's, that should be your goal. The, the goal of getting in some kind of firefight, you know, after some sort of scenario is, is, is silly to me. Uh, so this may be all you need to where it's that last ditch thing to where you've made contact accidentally, they mean you harm and you have to defend yourself or defend yourself and your family. Nine millimeter uh, is, is gonna be good for that close in kind of thing. Um, and then from there, depending on your situation, depending on your training, depending on your environment and your plan, it, it makes sense sometimes to carry some sort of larger rifle to give you kind of that medium range capability. Uh, and I say medium range, I personally choose a, a, an AR style or a carbine style uh, because it's a lot smaller, it's a lot more lightweight. Um, and I prefer it in a, in a 223, all right, a 5.56 millimeter uh, for a number of reasons. And we'll come back to kind of my, my caliber choices here, but this is for that medium range thing. I've got a lot higher magazine capacity. I've got a little more range with this, but again, my goal is to never make contact, never get into any sort of firefight moving from point A to point B. That's not my goal. My goal is personal protection and that's it. I don't need a larger caliber bullet that's capable of reaching out to longer ranges because if I need a caliber to reach out that far to get someone, then they're far enough away to where I could also hide from them and bypass them and never make contact with them to begin with. Um, so. Going back to kind of my caliber choices of the nine millimeter and the 223 or the 5.56 millimeter. Another reason I prefer that is, you know, the, the magazine capacity overall there, the rounds are lighter than their heavier counterparts. Uh, generally speaking, you know, both of those things are gonna allow me to have more magazine capacity for follow-up shots, but also have less recoil and it's easier for me to get back on target for that follow-up shot. Uh, so the other part of that is, is, is they're oftentimes cheaper. You know, they're less expensive to get some of these smaller calibers. So I can afford the ammunition to do range training and actually focus on what's actually important over caliber, which is shot placement. If I train often and I can put those rounds on target where I want them, then I'm going to be more successful than if I have a larger caliber bullet, but I'm not hitting where I'm aiming. Uh, so to me, uh, the nine millimeter and the 5.56 or 223 is a winner for that close in and you know kind of medium range personal protection. So that's why I choose the nine mil and the 5.56 and those are the reasons I choose these particular platforms. Uh, a lot of it has to do with my own personal familiarity. So again, if you're familiar with and good at manipulating and operating a different platform, then by all means do so. That's your plan to execute, not mine. Uh, now with that, there's a lot of different accessories that you can get for this type of thing. And you know, this thing is, the joke is, is that, you know, the, the, the 
SOP mod, the special operations peculiar modifications, like all the different accessories you can get. To the, this is like Barbie for men. You know, that's the joke. What I would say is this, is get very good at using stock before you start accessorizing, okay? Uh, be very good at using just regular iron sights on a Glock because those fundamentals are gonna apply if you have to replace this pistol long-term later down the road. You'll be able to pick up any pistol. They're all gonna be, you know, kind of uh, familiar to you without the additional training wheels that you put on it. Uh, same thing for your carbine. You need to be very good at using iron sights first. Iron sights require no batteries and the chances of them breaking is a lot more slim than a battery powered, you know, scope. Uh, and with scopes, if you're going to add a scope, you want to add that after you're familiar with your iron sights and very good with your iron sights. If you want to add a scope then, and then just have backup iron sights on your weapon, then go ahead and do so. But what I don't recommend you do is put a sight on here, but not have backup iron sights because if something happens to that sight, or if it's battery powered um, and you can't get batteries for it, then you no longer have the ability to sight this in and it's, it's obviously not gonna be as effective. So backup iron sights, being good with those iron sights as a must. And then if you wanna accessorize with something like a four power scope uh, to kind of give you increased visibility so you can use that for your decision making, maybe be a little more accurate if you've practiced with it, then that's something that I would recommend you do. But be first, be, first be good with the iron sights. Um, one thing that I learned in sniper school is, is a scope does nothing more than, than magnify your fundamental shooting errors. So if you're not good with iron sights, then fundamentally you have some issues that you need to work on. If you put a scope on there, a four power scope on there, then you've magnified those fundamental errors four times. It doesn't make you a better shooter. Uh, so remember that when you're putting this stuff together and practicing with this and getting the training on it. And, you know, you don't need a really expensive firearm. You need a firearm that you can afford, that you can afford to train on, and you put your money into training to learn to use it effectively. That's more important. It's more important to have, you know, a $700 AR and $2,000 worth of training than it is to have a $2,000 AR with $700 worth of training. Um, so that's my two cents on these two as far as uh, personal protection. And this would be my choice uh, in a sort of um, a, a bug out scenario where I'm trying to get to an alternate bugging location or you know, just kind of getting off the X and moving to another safe place uh, for personal protection. I also recommend for both of these, if you're gonna be operating at night, that you incorporate a couple of important accessories, in my opinion, are some tactical lights. Uh, you can do, use those for a number of reasons, but if your plan includes moving at night or you feel like you need to be able to use these at night, a tack light is just a necessary thing in my opinion. Um, using a handheld flashlight, old school like FBI, FBI style while you're trying to you know, manipulate a firearm with the other hand, that's, we don't have to do that anymore. Um, there's a number of options that you could use you know, to where you have a tack light right there on your weapon and you can continue to operate. Your primary goal should be to never get in contact with anyone to where you have to exchange gunfire. That should be your primary plan. Your alternate plan, if you should make contact and you did everything you could to not make contact or it just happens to be chance contact, your goal should be to break contact, to get away from that situation as fast as possible, especially if you have your family. Um, from what I see, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of folks carrying way too much ammo, way too many mags for what I consider that plan. Um, it doesn't take, like a, a basic load for us in the military was, was seven magazines, seven 30 round magazines. So 210 rounds for this and probably three mags for the Glock. Um, but you have to understand that we're going in with 11 other people uh, or more, you know, depending on what unit you're in. And our goal is to make contact uh, most of the time. Uh, so we're going in with the intent of exchanging gunfire. Um, that should not be your goal. Uh, you can get away with a lot less rounds. You need enough rounds to effectively suppress that situation to where you can get away. Does that take, you know, 200 some rounds? Probably not. I've, I've heard some folks even carry up to a thousand rounds, which is, is silly to me. Now, I didn't carry that in any theater of combat personally. Um, so a lot of uh, weight is added to your bug out bag uh, or your go bag if you're if you're overestimating the amount of rounds you need to move from point A to point B when your point is to not be seen. 
Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, personally, I would carry probably three mags of the pistol and maybe four mags of the rifle. So maybe, you know, 120 rounds or so for the, for the rifle and probably 45 rounds or so for the pistol. That should be plenty enough if I happen to make contact to be able to keep their heads down long enough for me to get away, uh, which is going to be my goal. Uh, of course, that goal is still secondary to never running into anybody to where I have to exchange gunfire. Uh, that's not, not a goal, not a thing I'm trying to do. Um, so, you know, again, local laws and, and all that, you're responsible for that, not me. Um, but, you know, those are some considerations I want you to think about when you're thinking about how many rounds do I need to carry? Because it's very easy to think that you're going up against the Mongolian horde and that you need 2,000 rounds in your bag. And you can't carry that weight for very far. And you probably didn't need that much. So something to think about. Now, moving on from this, this is my choices that I would use in a bug out type scenario where I'm on foot, on vehicle, whatever. These type of, of firearms are not legal in all places. Uh, I think we all know that. Um, a good alternative to that uh, is a 12 gauge shotgun. The versatility of a 12 gauge shotgun can't be overstated. Uh, you can get birdshot rounds for hunting, you can get buckshot that can be used for hunting and self-defense, and of course you can get slugs which could be used for both as well. I personally choose the middle of the road there and I like to use double lot buck. Um, and you know the for places where this isn't legal this is a really good option. You can build tactical shotguns that give you the capabilities that you need for that type of scenario that we talked about we're using these for you know to kind of create distance to break contact to get away to get to where you're going so maybe this is a great option for you i personally like this option for home defense more than i like either of these uh, so for your bug-in location your alternate bug-in location having a 12 gauge tactical shotgun or even a regular 12 gauge shotgun is a good thing to have uh, and this reminds me of going back to here, the nine millimeter and the, the 5.56 millimeter, that's what most of the military and police use. So even if there was something you could imagine where you know uh, civilians were no longer able to get ammunition, they're still gonna be producing that ammunition for law enforcement, for the military. Uh, so you, know, you might be able to find that a little easier than some of these other kind of uh, what I consider trendy calibers out there. Uh, so I like to keep it simple with that. Same thing with a 12 gauge. Uh, even in places that restrict the sale of pistol ammo or rifle ammo, you're still able to get shotgun ammo a lot of places uh, very easily. So it's something that you can kind of stock up on and have available. And uh, I think this is a good choice for the places where this isn't appropriate and is a great choice for home defense. Uh, basically because with a double up buck, I've got a lot less over penetration than I would have with something like this. Uh, the other thing is, is if you're like me, you sleep really hard. Uh, I don't hear a lot of things at night. I wake up, it takes me a minute to get there. Like if somebody's breaking into my house, the last thing I want to think about is focusing on the front sight and squeezing off a well-placed, you know, pistol shot. Uh, I like a tactical shotgun with a dot sight on it, so with a tack light on it, so I can light up the area, figure out what's going on. And then if I need to engage, I can engage without a whole lot of thought and a whole lot of fine movement. You know, this is kind of the, uh, you know, this isn't for people that like to aim. Uh, but you do need to aim, of course. But I think the 12 gauge is, is a better option for me for home defense. So I like that. I like to have that option in my bug out, uh, my bug in location and my alternate bug in location. So something to think about there. You also don't have to worry so much about the over penetration that you'll get with these where you're punching through walls. You may have your children or other members of your community on the other side of those walls you need to think about. Uh, so you, you, uh, you have to think about that. You have to worry about that less when you have a nice big round that spreads that impact uh, over a greater surface area. Now, as far as long range capabilities, um, I think that they have their place, but that place is not, in my opinion, on a bug out. Um, this is for your bug in locations. And again, it goes back to this is a larger caliber that is more accurate at greater distances. Uh, and, you know, typically they have a, a nice big scope that's 10 power plus, and you can see for, you know, 800, 1200 yards really well with that. Um, if it takes a scope to see them again, then they're far enough away to where you don't have to engage them and you could bypass around them. Um, but then again, for the people that are close up, you'd have to transition to something that's more close range. So 
this to me is just an extra thing to carry that I wouldn't personally recommend. Uh, but this is great for your bug in location or your alternate bug in location. But again, uh, I used in the military, I use a Remington baseline Remington Model 700 and that's what I prefer. That's probably what I'll always prefer. Some of that may be familiarity. Uh, but this is just a 308 uh, or 7.62 millimeter. Uh, again, it's a military and police caliber, you know, kind of going along those same points. But if you don't have training with a sniper style rifle or long range marksmanship, then this setup is not going to make you a good shooter. It's not going to make you a sniper. Um, it's going to magnify any fundamental shooting errors you have. So it's important that whatever you choose to carry, you get the training to go with it. But with that said, you know, this has its place in a bug-in location or an alternate bug-in location. If you want to kind of stop a threat at a distance um, and keep them from getting close to you and your family for personal protection, that's where I think this has the biggest place in the overall big picture, the big system of preparedness. And of course, you know, kind of going along with this in the tactical supplement, we have a couple of other things I recommend, especially if you're getting into the medium to long range stuff. A good set of binoculars, a small set of binoculars. These I used uh, in the desert, both theaters. And I really like these. They're just some very small, compact binos. Um, and what this gives you, even though you don't plan to engage someone at a greater distance, this gives you some situational awareness. Uh, if I can use this to see what's up ahead to determine if I need to buy, start bypassing now or if it's something that may or may not be a threat, this is gonna give me a lot of information that I can gather with this. Um, so I think that's an important piece that you may wanna to add to your preps. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, especially if you start getting into the long range stuff, having a small compact range finder that's good and reliable uh, is gonna take a lot of the guesswork out of using these long range precision weapons. So a couple other things that I recommend you think about adding to your prep, but again, it's all according to your plan and your preference. But that's, that's my, my thing. I like, for movement, I like to have a Glock 19 with an AR-15 style carbine. Uh, iron sights is always my primary. Of course, tactical lights to go with that. I'm not overdoing it on the magazines. I like to have a tactical 12 gauge with a light and a point, like a red dot holographic sight, uh, just a point and shoot option. So when I wake up in the middle of the night, I got sleep in my eyes still, I can still effectively engage, don't have to worry about over penetration. So that's my bug in and alternate bug in location kind of firearm. And then this is to really reach out and touch that threat at a distance uh, at a bug in location or alternate bug in location to keep me and my family safe. So some things to consider to keep you and your family safe uh, but that's just my spin on it. That's, that's what I do. And hopefully you learn something from that that you can apply to your own plan.